Doug, who also likes to make a few odd mistakes, but it didn't cost him at all. It's Broadway boy. He gave his backers a right few frights at the weekend, and it was no bother to him. He's overcome it spectacularly well. I think almost the big story of this race is how incredibly well backed he was. He's going up against last year's Betfair Chase winner, who admitted, admittedly was awful the last day and is conceding loads of weight and possibly a well handicapped 300 through five. And they couldn't get enough of him. He was just backed as though defeat was out of the question. And that's because it was. Yeah, look, I was very impressed with Broadway Boy's performance. Um, his format round Cheltenham was very good. He's reading three from four starts, um, only beaten by Florin Porter. Um, I think he seems to be a very consistent horse this year. Um, you know, his his ideal trip seems to be around three miles plus. Um, I thought his jumping lacked a little bit of fluency, um, but he did get back into a rhythm for for the latter part of his race. Um, he managed to fight this and still get up to win quite easily in the end. I still think there's a little bit more improvement to come from him. Um, I'd be interested to see what they did with him for the festival. I thought he'd be a nice horse for the National Hunt Chase. I think the trip would suit him. The Tree Mile 6, I think I'll get a little bit more improvement out of him. I would think he might be up against it in the Grade 1 Tree Mile. Um, I think he'd have to improve again. But if I was if I was putting a bet on him, I'd be going down the National Hunt National Hunt race. That'd be where I'd Yeah, be. I'd very much agree with you. He'll be six by the time it comes around. And that yeah. just seems like the blindingly obvious race to go for with him. Doesn't seem like that's what they want to do though. And I and I get why. Like Sam, I'm sure, wants to ride him, and that's out of the question if they go that yeah. way. Unless we're back in some like bizarre COVID policy and we don't <laughs> nobody wants that again. But that worked out nicely. For the pros, his uh, mark was 146, so he's he's going to go up for this. I wonder how much he's going to go up, and would the ultimate be an option for him? Yeah, he'll probably be mid-150s after that, I'd say. Mm. Be... Yeah, at least, you, you would think. Uh, George, what did you make of Broadway Boy? Yeah, so I'm, I'm probably just going to be retreading some of the ground um, I went over last time he won. Like he's, this is one of my favourite horses in training. I really, really like him. Um you should be noted it was only Sam Tristan Davies' second time riding him over fences. And I just thought a couple of times where Tom Bellamy would have, rightly or wrongly, given him a kick into one, like Sam just sat. And that's where he sort of come up anyway, where maybe it's like where he's been revved up the last day and Tom sent him at everything and, you know, nearly got it badly wrong three, four out. I just wonder if he was expecting to be booted in and then when Sam sat still he sort of guessed anyway because then like you know it's coming down to the second last Sam's given him a real kick forward he's like oh this this horse is going to go anyway he's going to let fly I might as well go with him and um, I think that I would give him the benefit of a doubt with those mistakes that maybe that's just a case of he's been ridden one way the last time and and this time it was a bit um, a bit jarring for him being ridden by someone different. That's not to say neither jockey's done anything wrong. It's just differing approaches to riding him, um, which might have just confused the horse a little bit. Let's say he stayed on well. I think he'll improve again up to four miles. I think stepping down in trip now for the Ultima wouldn't be the way I would go. I would just keep kicking. I'd send him National Hunt route, route but... Um, Say if they're not keen to do that, it would be a shame because I think he'd actually take a lot of beating in that. Beyond him and Favre de Shamdu, it's, it's a very, very shallow race. Um, Protectorat actually wasn't beaten that far by him in the end as well. And he pulled very hard, pulled very hard, jumped very sort of skewy all the way around, and somehow still finished the race off. I think there's still another big performance in Protectorat because. I just kept thinking he won't finish this race. He won't finish this race because he, he was still about five from home. He was absolutely pulling Harry Skelton's arms out. And it was interesting he actually finished off as well as he did. Like he's obviously got a lot of ability still. He's just got to race a bit more efficiently and jump a bit more efficiently. And maybe we can find the Betfair chase winner again in him. But um, yeah, it was a bit disapp disappointing to see him racing so keen. Um, I'd say yeah. that was probably due to dropping him in. So... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, 
Um, but I actually think out of the first three finishers, he finished the best. He was doing the best uh, after the last and between the line. He looked as if he was finishing the strongest out of the three. And I was actually quite impressed with how well he run. And he, like George said, he never dropped the bike for three miles. Um, and he still... Stars. And he still made ground coming up the hill like he did. I thought it was quite impressive. Um, and look, going back to Borey Boy, you know, having the, doing the performance that he did um, on Saturday in open company, I thought was very impressive for a novice. I would completely so. agree with that. Like they all have the experience, he doesn't. Yeah. And again, he's making those mistakes. There is maybe there's an argument to be said that. Sam Tristan Davis can pull this off again that for the second year in a row he can win the Brown Advisory because he'll be on a horse that wants to be on the front end and he knows exactly how, how to do that and the horse knows Cheltenham like the back of his hand just like the real Wacker did. So, I think he'd improve for being ridden how Sam Tristan rode the real Wacker as well. Like he, this mm. horse wants to be thrown at fences. Mm. Like that's what I'm saying where he just made those couple of mistakes. Was Belzy threw him at everything on the way around. I say he nearly got it very wrong with one. But I think that's where the horse made his mistakes, was Sam sort of just went to sit on him and let him pop away. Because maybe that's what he was like the last time he rode him, was he was just popping away on his chase debut. But this is a horse, he wants to be thrown at fences and he wants to go out and take the race to them. That's what I like him, about him so much. He's a very a similar sort to the real Wacker, really. Yeah. Also, don't forget, Katie has put up Favor de Chambeau on this show at 12 to 1. And that 12 is long gone. Ella McNeil has since been on and said, Gordon thinks three-card Bragg is his, one of his best novice chasers. We all know who the best one is. Founder 50, who's going to win a grade one over Christmas. You've been told. Uh, more on that to come in our Christmas preview on Thursday. Um, but like they're probably going to go for the Brown Advisory with them. But the way they were talking, maybe they'll go national chase. And if they do, that's fantastic. Uh, but you'd imagine they want Sam on board. And I just I wonder about... This doesn't get talked about a whole lot, but Colin Tizard had a very prominent Irish amateur jockey booked to ride Native River. And that very prominent Irish national hunt jockey had said, yes, I'll, I'll ride. I'm looking forward to it. I think he's got a great chance. And then Frankie Tightlips came along and strong-armed him into riding Manila Rocco for JP and was like, you better ride for JP. And that's that. And they were left without a jockey of that caliber. And I think there's a fear among some British trainers that that would happen again to another one. So, and to be fair, like, what was that jockey supposed to do? You're riding for JP every day of the week. You're not going to not ride for him at the festival. But that might be one of the reasons why so many trainers are reluctant to put a horse in that. Because unless you've got a magic amateur, you're going to be going up against the Codfather and others, and then you're screwed. Yeah, I but think I they do... get Jack Baker in, to be fair. I don't, I, I think I said it before on here. I don't, I don't think they go down the Irish route, Nigel Twist and Davies. I, I, He's um he's now working for Charlie Post, but he's got a long, long history with Nigel Twist and Davies. And having someone of his calibre sort of if if they were going to go national hunt route, certainly wouldn't be a negative. Katie? Yeah. I, I was just gonna back up on what George said. I think there's plenty of amateurs that'll be queuing up to ride in that uh, in riding that race anyway. And I don't think trying to find a rider for that race of, of a, a good rider will be difficult. I think they'll be queuing up to, to ride horses in that race. So there's plenty of good ones out there anyway. Oh yeah. No, listen, of course there are. Absolutely. And plenty of good jockeys who desperately want to ride Hewick. They just don't know where they're going to be on St. Stephen's Day Boxing Day. So stay tuned to the final front of podcast. Shark Hanlon, who's on the show with us, available on the episode right before this one on your podcast. I'm not app. busy, Shark. <laughs> I did put your name forward. Like, you know, I've, I've got a guy. Dennis might have retired. Dennis might have packed, packed it in, but it's okay. We've got a backup for you. We've got George Gorman. Um, he, he said he was interested and he'll get back to you. That's the polite, <laughs> polite response. He didn't say any of that and I didn't even mention your name. Um, no. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all pans out. Um, but that Shark Island episode available for you now on the Final Front Podcast. Blood Destiny makes a winning debut over fences. Uh, Blood Destiny is Orsu. Speaking of Dennis O'Regan, he was waxing lyrical about him. Around about this time last year on the Final Furlong podcast, he rode against him in a novice sirtle in Cork. And it was a little bit like hearing Robbie McNamara talk about going up against Undeso. 
He looked up, saw him in front of him, looked down, does a little bit of riding, looks back up again. He's gone. And that's how it felt going up against a Blood Destiny in that hurdle race. It didn't go to plan in the Triumph Hurdle. He just blew his lid that day. And he ran all right at Ferry House, but nowhere near the capability that he had shown earlier in the season. The reputation remained intact, though. And now we know why, because that's a flawless chasing debut, Katie, Katie Young. Yeah, look, I was very impressed with his jumping um, at Nakes on Thursday. I thought he was very, very fluent. He was nearly foot perfect by the second last where he made a little mistake. He just brushed through it. But on the whole, I thought he was brilliant. Um, Townend was raving about him post-race. Um, so to hear him say that is, you know, you take a lot from that. Um, look, I think it was a very, very truly run race. Uh, Jack and Rachel, they didn't let him get an easy lead out front. They sat on his boot the whole way. They applied pressure. They wanted to make him keen. They wanted to make him pull hard. However, he didn't. Um, he was very relaxed out in front. Um, I thought he just blew them all away. He never really came off the bridle. Um, I think it's, it, that was his first trip out of two miles. And I really do think it was kind of, it's going to be the making of him. Those juveniles seem to really benefit um, from stepping up and trip after their juvenile year. Um, he was in receipt of the four-year-old four year four, four seven-pound allowance. He won't get that next year when he turns five. Um, but look, he was making lengths at his fences. He was looked very enthusiastic. Um, I do, I do have my doubts on whether, in a stronger run race, whether he, if he didn't get his own way out in front, and someone took him on for the lead, would his jumping go a bit? Um, would he flop? That'd be my only concern with him. Um, I'd also just note as well. He seemed last year his runs the first part of the season were much better than the end of, than the last part of the season. So I think it'll be interesting to see what he does throughout the season and whether he does something similar to what he did last year or he's just a different horse over a fence. But I do think he is a very good bet for Cheltenham Conforda. I think middle distance looks like his trip at the moment. Yeah, my initial reaction was, geez, could he be the one who enters the Arkle picture? Because something has to. It's Marine National, Fasal Vega right now. Something's got to emerge. But the more I watch the race back, and definitely hearing you assess it as well, it does appear as though intermediate distances are just tailor-made for him. If he is going to Cheltenham, which we all assume he is, um, you'd imagine it's going to be Turner's. The one thing I'd have a concern about, though, Katie, is he... It, it doesn't make any sense that he ran as badly as he did in the Triumph Hurdle. Now, horses can have off days, but then that continues into Ferry House. So is it, although, albeit he runs much better there, is it a combination of didn't have the mind for it and it got to him on the day? Or do you think it might have just been some sort of physical issue that we're not fully aware of? Yeah, it could be just that his best run, he runs better fresh, first part of the season. He just never carried that form throughout the latter part of the season. You know, he might have just blew his top um, in Cheltenham last year. He he had a hood on. Uh, we kn we knew he was very racy. He was a bit keen. Um, they still had that option to put the hood back on. He raced without it um, at Nace. So if they do feel like he is getting a bit keen again, they do have the option to put that on as a backup option. But look, I think we kind of just need to forget about what happened last year at Cheltenham and just think afresh with this with, the, with this horse going forward over fences because he could be a better horse over a fence than what he showed us over hurdles. Apple Away could be a better horse over a fence as well. She was a grade one novice hurdle winner at Aintree. Travels beautifully in her races. If she was going to be able to, question was, was she going to be able to make it into a, a nice chasing prospect? And by the looks of things, George Gorman, a very, very smart staying chaser in the making again for Lucinda Russell. Yeah, no, I, I thought this was a very likeable performance. Um, the last day, I thought she'd been given far too much to do on her chase debut against likes of Grey Dawning and um, the Mullins horse, the French name, Gaillard de Menil. Um, they went a fast, they went a very fast pace that day, um, you know, mostly sort of set by those two horses. And 
for for a horse making its chase debut it was a big ask and she she, she was a bit slow at times and um sort of ended up running out of pace um so running out of steam but um much more likable at the weekend like she was a bit show jumpery to start with which you'd expect for a horse that sort of the fences came so thick and fast the last day that it's no surprise she backed off a little bit and she was a bit careful but over the last three she was absolutely deadly like when she was asked to quicken and what you like to see from a real sort of staying chaser as well is like the further she went the better she traveled like about five or six from home she just came hard on the bridle again given that actually the three of them had all raced fairly lethargically on the way around, which made me think, you know, when it gets deep at Leicester, it can be very deep. And I think it was probably worse than it even looked on TV there because there was Alaphilippe didn't go a yard and Apple Way was sort of behind the bridle, I said, for the first half of the race. But that's sort of what you like to see, the ability to just sort of switch off and pop away, which she did really well. And then when she was really asked for an effort, She's absolutely pinged the last three out of bad ground, which isn't an easy thing to do. It's a wet, like She's beaten horses rated inferior to her, um, receiving weight, but she's done it very, very well. Like The other two have stopped dead. And I think it was as much to do with how, quick, how well that she quickened away from them as it did to do with the ground. Like, I wouldn't be looking at them going, they've absolutely blown out. I just think they just couldn't go with her and they've, they've blown up trying yeah i'd completely agree with that um I'd, I'd just be taking massive positives about her performance what she's done and be very very excited about her going forward it's it's not going to get any easier for her but she doesn't really have a whole lot to fear and i would i, I would imagine she can get an awful lot closer to Grace dawning the next day particularly if Grey dawning is going to plowed through a fence like he did two out at Cheltenham the other day against Ginny's Destiny, who continues to improve, steps up from a handicap win the last day to go and win the novice chase. It's only a matter of time before Grey Dawning is back in the winner's enclosure, and it's probably going to be at graded level. I thought some of the comments about moaning about Harry Skelton were a bit much. I don't know what more he could have done here, quite frankly, and I, I didn't think he did a whole lot wrong in the first place, but two very nice horses. Grey Dawning may very well go for a handicap on New Year's Day at, at Cheltenham, uh, and Grey Dawning definitely up to graded level next time out, Kitty. Yeah, look, I don't think um, Harry did much wrong. I think the horse made a bad error at a crucial point in the race, um, which gave Ginny's destiny the upper hand. Um, he lost a lot more ground at the second last than he was actually beaten. Um, I thought it was actually a very good performance for him to get back up to, and as close to the winner as he as he as he did get. Um, I think you'd be a nice horse going forward and I wouldn't be surprised if the tables turned. Um, there wasn't much between them. But look, taking nothing away from uh, Ginny's destiny. Um, yeah. He stepped up again at the back of the handicap win at Cheltenham uh, a month previous. Um, he defied an £8 rise. Um, his jumping won in the race on the day. Um, I think... I think I read somewhere that it was the fastest run handicap of the day over over that trip. Um, Damn. So, yeah, that's something to note. Um, they obviously went to good gallop. It was a truly run race. Um, but look, he'll probably get another rise from the handicapper. Um, but look, I think he could be a horse on the improve. And I'd say maybe a step up a trip as well might eke a little bit more of improvement out of them. Definitely opened a few more doors. But two nice horses, um, not much between them. Yeah, very much so. If he doesn't make that mistake at the second last, he wins. Yeah. The amount of ground yeah. he made up towards the finish was just yeah. very, very exciting prospect. Um, where would you like to see him next, George? That's the question. That's the question. I would, I'd like to point out he actually made had already made up plenty of ground through the race because he got in the bottom. He didn't make like mistakes like that, but he really got in the bottom of a couple and lost a bit of ground in mid-race. You think he's already made up probably five, six lengths on him throughout the race, Ginny's Destiny, and then done that at the last. I think he was much the best horse in this race. But I think the the ride that Ginny's Destiny got probably drew those mistakes out of him, made them more costly. My worry with Grey Dawnings, I think he might have to make the running. Oh. Because then he's then he's able to sort of measure the fences that bit better. He, he really just looks to me like a horse that wants to, 
He looks like he also wants to make the running but doesn't want to be taken on, which worries me because okay. if people I think that's where Cobden rode like he did. He went, Well, you're gonna to have to go some to go with me. And I think Harry Skelton knew if he got out into clear like if he got out into daylight on him, he could end up running very keen and doing too much. That's where he's chosen to sort of drop in behind Ginny's destiny. I don't know. He's clearly a very talented horse, but I'm just not sure he's going to be the most versatile in terms of tactics. Because you look through that race again, there, there are at least three occasions he really got in the bottom of one and lost a fair bit of ground. Like it was just mm. ha just happened that he had enough ability to make it back. I don't know where you go from him with him from here, really. Um, I, I, yeah, well, no. Carlos Star is really... going to come too soon. Yeah. And um, that's over three miles, isn't it? Is it the way with yeah. lad is two and a half, is it? Or is that two? What? Well, funny, I'd, I'd like to see him go up to three miles. Do you, is that not something you'd like to see? I don't think he stayed at Exeter. I don't think he stayed at Exeter. Like, mm. it's, it partially stay away, Faye obviously stays very well, but I think him and the other horse have stopped as well. If you, if you, him and cha the changing man. Um, yeah. That was my thinking behind. I was really with him last time, Grey Dawning, and it was mostly to do with dropping down in trip. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. I probably need to reevaluate that. But didn't they thr try him over three miles at Aintree? And he was, it was, he fell way too far to know. Yeah, he did behind Apples, Apples Away. Um, so clearly yeah. the skeletons at some point think three miles is, is within range for him. But, but then he's run over three mile first time this year and dropped back the past two starts. Yeah. He's actually yeah, dropped back in trip again, technically, from Haydock to Cheltenham. True, he has. Yeah. I would point out the Skelton horses have all badly needed a run by the looks of things, Protect Rat being a good example of that. Um, we're yeah. all on the lookout for Patrick Mullins' National Hunt Chase ride. Could it be Nick Rocket? Could it be Manila Cocooner? Could it be Embassy Gardens? Who absolutely bolted up, was very strong in the betting, first run back after eight months. Lizzie Kelly said on the Final Furlong podcast that she'd done a piece of work on this horse at Cool Sutton and she fell in love with him instantly, which is one of the reasons why I was backing him for the potato race. <laughs> that went horribly badly wrong. Uh, but this is much more like it from him. And he might be very much up to that level later in the season, Katie. He might very well emerge as he is going to, I'm sure, be on the boat to Cheltenham. And maybe, just maybe, Patrick Mullins will be riding him in the National Hunt Chase. I'm hoping it'll be Nick Rocket, but right now this fellow has put his hand up. Yeah, look, um, I think it was a truly run race. He ran in, um, they went with a very good even gallop from start to finish. He proves that he has the stamina to be co considered to stay in novice chase and division this year. Um, the fact that they started him out in two, over two mile seven speaks volumes. Um, they definitely won't be coming back and trip with him anyway. Um, I think his form is a little bit inconsistent over the last couple of seasons. His best kind of runs seem to be early on the season. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what he does next time out, whether he can maintain that form he did show us on Tuesday, um, or whether may he may flop like he has done in previous seasons. Um, but look, his jumping on the hole was very, very good. Um, he showed us that he could settle well in behind. Um, and he does have that little bit touch of class over that longer three mile trip. Um, I do think let's go champ look though, looked as though he just didn't quite see out the tree mile. Um, I think he may well be dropped back and trip going forward off the basis of that run. Um, but look, that was a lot better run than he showed us in Nav in that day. Um, I thought the biggest disappointment was cool survivor. I thought he was better than what he showed us at Punchestown. I was expecting a lot more from this fella. I thought he put in two good runs previous to this. Um, he just never finished out his race at all. So I do think that that race may just lack a little bit of strength and depth on the basis that two of the closest rivals and ratings may be just disappointed on the day. But look... He's a lot to work from. He's a class to go through, and he'll definitely be on the short list for one of them staying chases throughout the season. Very much so. And I'm intrigued to see where they go while also clinging on to my Nick Rocket docket after <laughs> asking Patrick Mullins before Ferry has, hey, could this fella be a National Hunt Chase horse? To which he goes, I hadn't thought of that, actually. 
And now Johnny Deneen comes along and ruins the whole thing by putting him up and up in the ante. Damn it, Johnny, you could have kept it to yourself. But no, uh, we'll, we'll see how that all develops. But this guy, very, very interesting. Uh, Christoph Sumion and Paul Carberry were very impressed with Liam's celebration on Lucid Dreams. They were both... <laughs> Is that a shake of disapproval, Katie? Or... <laughs> I'd say Paul Dolan was, wasn't too happy, but <laughs> I don't know probably, if he wrote him ever. <laughs> probably wanted to get a Hurley from the back of the car and go and have a good old chat with him mm. in the car park afterwards. Uh, but hey, it's all in good fun. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Uh, Lucid Dreams has now run 13 times this year, once mm. in a bumper, six runs over hurdles, won three of them, six runs over fences, and he's won three of those starts as well. And for all those people who are saying, oh, imagine only fell in the other day. Uh, clearly, the horse that, uh, the Nolan horse hasn't just not fired at all here. But still, the horse who pushed him all the way has now gone and won and suddenly imagines for him is looking that little bit better. Maybe he won't go for the Cotto Star Novice Chase. Maybe he's not hang heading over for the Feltham anymore, anymore with the um, superstar French horse coming over. And now that Shark Hannon has confirmed Hewick for the King George, clearly Gordon is having second thoughts about unleashing Stable Star Jerry Kalam, or maybe that's more to do with Alaho. Hewick, Alaho, one or the other. But uh, I'm sure that Jack Kennedy and the team were fairly happy with uh, Imagine's form at the back of this. And Look, it's it's a nothing race, but it's some story. It's a small connections, small yard, 13 runs this season in three different disciplines, and he's been winning in all of them. It was a pretty simple task for him in the end, Katie. Yeah, look, I think he's shown a lot of progression over the season. Um it was a great story for small connections, as you said. So you know, these are kind of the stories that keep racing alive. Um, look, I think he oh, he obviously looks like he's going to be a better chaser than what he did over hurdles. I think he was rated 131. And I think the revised is rating to 144. They put him up four pounds for his efforts um, on Sunday. Look, I thought he was very impressive um, from the front at Navin on Sunday. Um, I... I do think that Paul Nolan's horse, Joyo Machan, was very disappointed. I don't think that was his true running on the day. He never looked happy throughout the race. He was behind the bridle the whole way. Sean um, had a loop in his rein. He never jumped. I, I'd just be right in the line through him. Um, I do think that you could question on how strong that race was. Like a, a match race like that, you can't read much into it. Um, but taking a look, not taking us away from the winner, um, he was never out of second gear the whole way. He jumped with fluency and he won with ease. Um, I think John Ryan might have mentioned that they might go for a grade one over at Christmas. That's only going for the 14. Yeah, that's what 10 days, maybe yep. a more of 10 days. It's not much, but he is progressing with every run so. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he fares up st stepping up into open comp open grade one company like like that. But he'll need to improve a lot more again. But look, he looks like he has ability, so, so he he deserves to take his chance. Well, you know the way there's always like no hopers and outsiders in these grade ones in Ireland. It's just like clearly show up for a nice day out. He's a hundred to one, and okay. If Imagine was to rock up here instead of the Cotter Starnovus Chase, he'd have an awful lot of work to do to turn the form around there. Not a whole lot, but he would have to do it. Um, the entries for that race are Gaelic Warrior, Founder 50, Corbett's Cross, American Mike, Blood Destiny, Classical Dream, Factor File, Three Card Brag, Ilete Tom, I Know the Way You're Thinking, Fasal Vega, Let's Be Clear About It, Manella Kakuner, Mr. Policeman, Grange Claire West, Dr. Bravo, Embassy Gardens, Fabio de Chambeau, Flanking Maneuver, Imagine, Nick Rocket, Galixios, Saint Felician, Sharjah, Aspire Tower, Hartwood, Percival Legras. Uh, Spillane's Tower, Cool Survivor, Arctic Brezel, and Lucid Dreams. That's not a bunch of no-hopers. That's all serious, serious racehorses. They're obviously not all going to line up together, but damn, that's going to be a good race. Yeah, he'd have to step up to be even in the same sentence as some of those, but look, if they want to take their chance, they'll take their chance, but I don't know whether he's as good as the likes of they are, but look. No, I can't imagine. He wants to. He wants to. Say again, George. Hands, so. so he's only a novice once. He's probably not yeah. going to be up to winning grade ones next year. So why not have a crack at grade one novice? Mm. 
where else do you go? Like you're going to be too high for handicaps now. Just keep cracking on, trying to nick novice chases with him. I'd, you can always go on the flat if it doesn't work out. <laughs> Give him a break. Well, they've done, that. They've, they've <laughs> done everything else with him. Uh, it'll be 14 starts this year, and I'd, who the hell knows? I'd, that's As a more member than... of the Fishwood team, I'm a big fan of 13 starts in the year of, of, across three disciplines. That's that's very, very Fishwood esque. That's um, Constitution Hill ever run that many times. He's not He's going to say, what's his career stats? What, what is actually. Be how many races has Constitution Hill run? Eight? Eight? No, uh, Let's try and work this out. So. He's won on debut. He's won the Tallworth. He's won the Supreme. He, he's then off the track till the Fighting Fifth, Christmas Hurdle, Champion Hurdle, Aintree Hurdle, seven. Jesus. And it's point to point. He's ran seven times. That doesn't on, count. On and this fella's run 13 times in one year. Nikki? I think, I, I think Charlie Bougie ran seven times his Champion Chase year. It's either six or seven. I think he won all of them. Man, I got that horse badly wrong that year. I had convinced myself, oh, he doesn't act to Cheltenham. He, he just he just won't be able for it. It, it was me. a bad champion chase. I didn't say that, but it was a bad champion chase. Gary Moore is about to burst through your door, son. You're going to...